We are back on Inside Politics. Our guest today is David Plazas. He's the opinion and engagement editor at Tennessee and has similar duties with the USA Today Tennessee Network. Uh, David, you've been here about three years. Uh, what did you know about Nashville before you came, and how has that turned out to be what you thought was true or what you thought wasn't true? I knew very little about Nashville. In fact, I thought that I had to like country music when I got here. <laughs> now, thankfully... <laughs> you got to have a guitar exactly, and everything else. <laughs> thankfully, I was blaring country music on the way from Florida to, to Nashville. But the reality is I've really fallen in love with a lot of the music and the Country Music Hall of Fame and the rich traditions that we have here in music and food and the very welcoming culture. So this has been just a tremendous move. So I'm very thankful to the people of Nashville. There are a lot of people who think now that after what happened with some of the off-year off elections in Virginia recently that perhaps Tennessee has more of a chance to be a battleground state next year in the midterm congressional elections. Um, you saw what happened in Virginia with the change in their legislature, which also had a Republican supermajority. But are Virginia and Tennessee enough alike to make any comparisons? No, they're not. And I think that Tennessee is going to stay quite red unless something significant happens. There's a lot of call to have uh, former Governor Phil Bredesen join the Senate race. Uh, I've seen arguments pro and con. On the one hand, they're saying it, they want to be here because he has the best chance to win, according to many Democrats. On the other hand, other Democrats are saying, let's start with some new leadership. We need new blood. And so that's the big discussion that I'm hearing, in fact, in, in letters and, and other op-eds that are he's coming been, to me. He's been very quiet about it the mm -hmm. last couple of weeks after saying he was going to make it, after he was going to change his mind and, and look at it again and make a decision. Do, do you think his uh, the amount of time he's taking is an indication one way or the other about what he might do? I think he's being very deliberate. My understanding about his thought process is that he really thinks thinks these things through. Uh, now, presently, there is a Democratic candidate, James Mackler, who's an attorney and, and veteran. Uh, have you had a chance to meet him? Mm -hmm. uh, I have. I have I have had a chance to meet him, and someone with a lot of energy, with a lot of ideas. Uh, um, he's someone who's not well known, though. That's his Achilles heel, and he would certainly be going against either uh, former Representative Fincher or uh, Congressman Marsha Blackburn. What are your thoughts about that race at this point? This, we did have Andy Ogles get sure. out this week, so we're down to basically those sure. two major candidates on the Republican side. Well, well, one interesting factor of we look at the Steve Bannon factor versus the Donald Trump factor. You know who who will win. You know Marsha Blackburn is is a supporter of, of Donald Trump. Uh, she also has is is favored by many of that uh, outside influence, whether it's Bannonism or so forth. Fincher, I think, would be the even more of the outsider. What we saw in Alabama, for example, at Luther Strange, the incumbent lost to Roy Moore. So it's always possible that the most extreme of the two could win that primary. Uh, that's one, one thing we'll have to see. Uh, now, the rural counties are going to be extremely important. And we look at the gubernatorial race, for example, uh, Carl Dean versus Craig Fitzhugh in the Democratic uh, election. That's one of the things that's really going to challenge Carl Dean to really get out there to those counties that are not national because of the tension that we're seeing between urban and rural areas. Uh, and on the Republican side, where, where we have, I believe, five candidates five at candidates. this time, you know, it's going to be a lot more saturated. It's it's uh, what I've heard is that you have, you know, uh, w w with very different styles, be it uh, with Diane Black, the Congressperson, or former Senator May Beavers, uh, and uh, uh, Randy Boyd, Bill Lee. And I think, and uh, Speaker Beth Harwell as well. Lots of echoes of Donald Trump among some of those. Although Beth Harwell seems to be running more on her record about what she's already done in state government. Most of them seem to be running even if they're in state government that they want to be up there and change what's going on in Nashville. So. Uh, that's a pretty crowded race at this point. There's no runoff. Who do you think is the front runner in that particular race? At this race? moment, from what we've seen from polling data from Vanderbilt, is that Marsha Blackburn has the best name recognition, so she would certainly in, have an in, advantage. But, but what about in the governor? What about in the governor's race? But yeah, in the governor's race, in, in the oh, in, in in the Republican gubernatorial yeah. race. Uh, Marsh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Diane Black. I apologize. Okay. Uh, she has the, the best name recognition there. And then right now, I think it's difficult with the Democrats at this moment because Carl Dean should have an advantage in many ways, and, and he's following the path that Phil Bredesen followed, which was going from mayor to, to governor. But at the same time, the state demographics are very different from what they were back when Phil Bredesen ran for governor. To close out, just very briefly, let's talk a little bit about the evolving role of the media. Are we starting to see what used to be considered print media versus electronic media all kind of blending together as we go in the next few years? I think most important is having credible, trustworthy information regardless of what platform it's on. And so uh, a lot of organizations like ours now consider ourselves primarily digital organizations that also do print. Print is still a very important part of our portfolio, but where the audience is going is in digital. 
as far as the USA Today Tennessee Network, how does that make the Tennessee and in particular a better newspaper? Sure, so what I do is I'm director of uh, opinion and engagement statewide, which means that even though each newsroom has its own opinion point person, I uh, really work together to really, when it comes to an issue of statewide significance, it helps us collaborate. So for example, the opioid epidemic, we were able to do a series of forums in Memphis and Nashville and in Knoxville to really have these important conversations and also pool resources so that we wouldn't duplicate those things. So we're still in independent newsrooms, but we collaborate tremendously on issues that have some concern. And, and we'll I be collaborating no next year. And I notice some candidates are all are using your platform to get their announcement about whatever office they're running from in every newspaper and usually on the Sundays. That, that's our, that's our <laughs> that's very intentional, yes. <laughs> give, give a little bit more oomph to the print thing and maybe not have necessarily have to do, although some are probably also doing events around that as well. No, and print is still very important because print, print uh, subscribers vote. You're also look, looking very quickly on Airbnb. What's that going to be about? Sure. So this is part of the cost of growth and, and change in Nashville series. So part 11 is coming up on the 26th, and it's looking at short-term rentals. And when we found some very interesting data. We asked readers to weigh in on this issue, so we'll have more information about what they said when it comes out. But this is a very divisive issue. The Metro Council uh, is divided, and also neighbors are pitted against each other when it comes to whether or not you should be able to rent your house for 30 days or less in a neighborhood. David, thank you for coming thank on the show. We'll have you back again, I'm sure, quite a bit. Thank you so future. much, Pat. Appreciate it. And thank you for joining us this week on Inside Politics. Hope you'll be back here again for a future show. If you can't get enough politics in the meantime, go to the News Channel 5 website. You'll find my Capital View commentary there. There's a new commentary posted every Friday afternoon. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, and we'll see you back here next time. Goodbye. <laughs>